Hello my people, <clears throat> how are we? Uh, fourth and final video for USUB uh, between this and the six videos that are already up on virtual fourth and uh, what you have available from Tuesday. I am really hoping that that is enough. Uh, should be. Uh, let's go ahead and, oh by the way, I'm, I'm gonna, I, I'm, I'm keeping these pages, I'm gonna scan and post these. Uh, the um, uh, to the to the assignment, okay. Uh, so uh, let's go ahead. I've also scanned the uh, I've also scanned the solution manual uh, for those uh, for those problems for those couple of pages. So um, now <clears throat> we're given this, and we need to ask ourselves, what's the inside, right? At, uh, root x sine of one plus x to the three halves dx. The inside on this one should be pretty easy to identify. Uh, and like I've said before, if you get the wrong u, you will get an unusable du, right? And if you get an un... Sorry, that's supposed to be uh, x. Oh, let's just start over. du is equal to 3 halves x to the 1 half dx. You will get it if you if you pick the wrong u. You will get an unusable du, okay? And that that basically says you know pick again. Um, in this case, we actually have everything that we need. Root x sh it should come as no surprise. Root x is the same thing as x to the one half. Uh, and if I put it over here next to my dx. I see that the only thing missing to find my du is this 3 halves right here. And I can multiply by 3 halves as long as I multiply by 2 thirds as well. And this right here is going to be sine u. It's another sine u du. Isn't that fun? Uh, sine u du uh, then winds up being negative 2 thirds cosine u plus c or negative two-thirds cosine one plus x to the three halves plus c when I substitute back in terms of my original variable okay oh gosh 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 okay let's look at this next one I have cosine of pi over x, all of that over x squared dx. It is rational in structure. Whether I need to treat it uh, like other rational structured integrands uh, obviously is left up to question. There's the issue of the fact that the numerator is trigonometric and the denominator is of course uh, polynomial, it's quadratic. So it kind of makes sense that this kind of needs to be pulled apart. Okay, well, the question is, how should it be pulled apart and what difference is that going to make? Well, sometimes we don't know until we actually do it. So let's go ahead and do it and see what reveals itself. Now, I recognize the fact that that now looks a whole lot like the one up here, right? I have a trig function of, a, uh, of an expression, and it looks like the derivative of that angle measurement expression is pretty close to what's left on the outside. And the only way to make sure is let's go ahead and designate uh, pi, uh, u is equal to pi over x, or if you want, pi times 1 over x, right? Because pi. Uh, you know, we don't. Sometimes we we have sort of a have sort of a cerebral flatulent and forget that pi is a constant. And so when we do du, it's pi times the derivative it comes along for the ride, just like any other coefficient does. And of course, the derivative of one over x, which is of course x to the negative one, is negative one over x squared dx. So my Basically, my du is negative pi times 1 over x squared dx. And the only reason I'm writing it like that is I already have that. 
I already have the 1 over x squared dx. What I don't have is the negative pi. And then I just need negative 1 over pi out in front. And I can do my substitution because at that point, this has now become my du. If I have negative 1 over pi, uh, this winds up being cosine u du. So sick of it being sine u du. Uh, and when I integrate cosine, because cosine is the derivative of sine, it becomes sine u plus c, or negative 1 over pi sine of pi over x plus c. And that winds up being my integral. Um, let's go ahead and look at one more trigonometric one. I think it'll be fun. Let's go ahead. Um, this one um, is going to look nasty without actually being too nasty. This winds up being cosine squared t and 1 plus tangent t dt with a 1 in the numerator. Now, um, when it comes to identifying our u, when it comes time to identifying what, was in, what is inside or what was potentially inside uh, the composite function, uh, usually when I see a radical, I want to at least entertain the possibility that the radicand, the entirety of the radicand, is my u. So let's test that. If u is equal to 1 plus tangent t, then du is equal to secant squared t dt. And gosh, I wish I had a secant squared. Oh, but wait, secant squared is 1 over cosine squared. And we do have a cosine squared here in the denominator. So if I want to actually change this, I can change it into 1 plus tangent t to the negative 1 half times secant squared t dt. And we see it just a little bit better. Okay. And that means that this is going to transform into u to the negative 1 half du. It's going to integrate as u to the 1 half over 1 half, or times 2, plus c, or 2 radical 1 plus tangent t plus c. And that is indeed uh, the answer, my integral. Now, uh, the next two are going to be uh, more challenging. Uh, you know, didn't really necessarily save them for last uh, for any particular reason. But let's go ahead, and this is x cubed, uh, x squared plus 1 dx. Now, again, I have a radical. If I have a radical, then let's go ahead and at least test the radicand as a potential u. And du then becomes 2x dx. Do I have 2x dx? Well, I have an x in here. Sure. Okay. And I can split x cubed up, right? So I can basically turn this into x squared plus 1 times x squared times x dx, right? Just sort of pull that x cubed apart because I'm going to need, I'm going to need this 1x right here to create my du. This right here is going to be u to the 1 half. And now I just have this x squared just kind of sitting around. Hmm, if only there was a way to express x squared in terms of u. Hmm, oh wait, I can solve for x squared right here by, by subtracting 1 from both sides, and x squared is u minus 1. 
Therefore, I'm going to get u to the 1 half, u minus 1, du. I now have that radical as a monomial in the, in the radicand as just the u. It can therefore be distributed u to the 3 halves minus u to the 1 half du. I now can do it term by term. That's u to the 5 halves over 5 halves or times 2 fifths. I have u to the 3 halves over 3 halves or times 2 thirds plus c. And then I'm going to substitute back in in terms of my original variable and what I get is 2 fifths x squared plus 1 to the 5 halves minus 2 thirds x squared plus 1 to the 3 halves plus c and that is indeed my answer. Uh, and what was difficult about this one is not just the back substitution but the fact that you have to pull the x cubed apart in order to properly do it uh, because the x cubed and we just we just don't think about doing that, right? We think about simplifying x squared times x into x cubed, but we don't think about the possibility of strategically pulling it back apart uh, in order to get what we need. And it's that sort of strategic unsimplifying that we need to get into a greater habit of, of, of thinking about on our own and being able to do on our own, okay? Which is why I keep bringing up problems that have that element in them. Now, last problem. Yay! Um, this is 1 over radical 21 minus 4x minus x squared dx. And right now you're thinking to yourself, no, 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 I didn't sign on for this. Oh, oh, but you did. Okay. Um, this is similar to the one where we transformed uh, the, the uh, quadratic in the denominator into, and we used completing the square to create uh, a denominator that was amenable to being integrated uh, into an arctan. This one is going to go into arc sine, and that should be apparent by the fact that your x squared is going to be negative. But the uh, basically the changing of the form is just a little more involved here because you're dealing with a negative. But uh, 21, and if I basically factor a negative out of these two terms, right? I can I can basically pull out the negative, and that winds up being 4x plus x squared, right? They're both negative, but if I pull a negative out and use parentheses, I can make 4x plus x squared, or x squared plus 4x, right? And that <clears throat> gives me the perfect opportunity to complete the square again, okay? So what we're going to do here is uh, when I add, f basically this is gonna be x plus two squared. When I put a four here to complete the square, that's actually a negative four, right? Because that negative that's sitting outside of here, that that if I needed to, I could distribute and sh and reveal that four's new value. So if I'm subtracting four underneath the radicand, I also need to add four, and I can go ahead and call that x plus two squared. Now, just like arctan had a nice, cute little formula, this one does as well, and I'll show it to you, okay? It's this one right here, okay? It's on the same page. It's reference page six at the back of your book, and you have basically your du and the square root of a squared minus u squared. Now, that's not, that's not the same u necessarily that we will be designating it as, uh, but basically, they just want to that. They just want you to know that that is some expression in terms of x, and that is a constant. Uh, that's basically what a and u mean. Okay, so I, however, am not going to do it that way, because I'm just difficult like that. Now, 
what I'm going to do is I want to transform that 25 into a 1, which means I need to divide by 25. But I'm inside the radical, so really what I'm dividing by is 5. I really need to multiply that denominator, right? I need to multiply that denominator 25 minus x plus 2 squared. I'm going to multiply the denominator by 1 over root 25 and the numerator by 1 over 5. And if I multiply by those, I'm going to wind up getting what I need. Uh, 1 fifth in the numerator, this winds up being square root of 1 minus um, well, uh, because it gets distributed to both terms and this one needs to remain squared, that could be expressed as x plus 2 squared over 25, or it could be x plus 2 over 5 quantity squared dx. And that is exactly the way that I want it. Because once it's there, I have u is equal to x plus 2 over 5, my du is equal to 1 fifth dx, and I see the fact that I have du over the square root of 1 minus u squared, which is, of course, arc sine of u plus c. Okay? Once I have arc sine of u plus c, I can go ahead and substitute back to my original variable and this is what I get. Now if I go ahead and I check the uh, check the formula you can get it by the formula as well and if you are thinking my gosh I will never ever ever remember that uh, remember how to go through that process uh, that's fine okay uh, but I did want you to uh, see the process so that you know where this formula comes from. This formula comes from the process by which I just uh, by which I just um, performed the integral. Okay, uh, because basically whatever this a value is can be subsumed underneath that u value as long as you put in the numerator what also needs to be provided there and then you have 1 minus u over a squared and that's why the u over a is right here okay in this scenario this u is the x plus 2 this a is the 5 that becomes the 25 okay um, I hope that, that I hope that all this has been helpful. I know it's a lot, guys. I know that it was it was bad enough when it was the chain rule and differentiation. And now we're undoing it and it winds up becoming even more complicated uh, because you have to change the form sometimes before you actually are capable of integrating. Um, but like anything else, time and exposure, time and exposure, and, and we've we've seen plenty of those sections that freaked us out. Uh, but then with time and exposure, we were able to arrive at a, a, a reasonable understanding and proficiency with uh, any of the procedures that, uh, that were a part of that, okay? Uh, I hope this has been helpful. Uh, just like the last one, please go ahead and uh, let me know if there are any questions on any of the problems uh, as they've been done. I will look forward to uh, looking at your tests over the weekend, and I will look forward to seeing you, or at least hearing you, uh, on Tuesday. Bye.